Hello, lovelies. Quick housekeeping. Uh, the OG GM's Christmas Seth's catalogue should be coming out next week, possibly the week after, depending how much other stuff gets in the way. Uh, the OG GM is partnering with me to produce these various things, with me doing the layout, which I hope he appreciates, because it's the job I hate the most <laughs> when it comes to creating tabletop games. Um, and he's gradually shifting it to be more of a sort of zine format than an actual uh, catalogue per se. But it's broadly compatible with all D20 type stuff. And you can find other ones that he's done, uh, like the Halloween one, on post-mort.com and elsewhere, wherever fine PDFs are sold. Uh, I have broken ground on a new game which is one I teased before and is kind of a dry run for an analog slash liminal horror game I hope to put together. Uh, this one's called Off Road with the emphasis on the off because things are a bit off in it. So it's kind of like a surreal horror-ish uh, road trip single player RPG. So my first dip of my toe into that water. Uh, no idea how long that's going to take because I've got so much other stuff I should be doing but uh, it's always good to have a side project that you enjoy for when you get tired with something else because the other stuff I'm working on at the moment is uh, book two of Ronin which is magic and monsters and things and while fun it's very repetitive and very tiring work if you're sub to me on Patreon and why wouldn't you be uh, please Keep in mind that Apple is now charging a ludicrous 30% off whatever you're paying in, and Apple is also forcing a change in the subscription plan to a monthly one, I think. So if you've been paying through Apple, please stop and use something else to pay me, uh, log in through the web, whatever else, um, and change your, your payment processing to something other than Apple Payments, because... Apple sucks, and clearly they're not getting enough money out of everybody. Uh, they've decided to to leech off this as well. So, yeah, and your subscription will be changing to a monthly one from whatever it was before. I think mine was already monthly, but you may want to check your other Patreon subscriptions. Um, yeah, that sucks. All right, this entire comments video this week is going to be about the video I did last week about right-wing... RPGs because I had a lot of stuff come in <laughs> about that uh, it's one of my most successful short-term videos um, so clearly it was uh, it, it made an impact on some people uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna bother to do definitions again because defining terms uh, is important even though it didn't help last time so the definitions I take are from the works and books of Roger Scruton, who was a conservative political scientist slash philosopher uh, who wrote the Palgrave Macmillan Dictionary of Political Thought, which is a standard reference text used in teaching over here in the UK. Um, I choose Scruton because he is a conservative and therefore should be more acceptable uh, to conservative and right wing, though that's the same thing. It really is, uh, listeners. Yeah, in in the hopes um, that that can help foster communication, though it doesn't seem to actually help too much. <laughs> I suppose, unfortunately, um, and it is important to define terms because, well, as we all know, political definitions these days are just screwed. Now, I don't necessarily agree with these a hundred percent. But they're the ones I'm using. Uh, so to define conservative, um, Scruton defines conservatism as an approach rooted in preserving established traditions, institutions, uh, moral orders and schema, uh, emphasizing stability over other concerns and a gradual evolution, if at all, rather than radical change. Um, he describes it as a political stance that values practical experience I, I would disagree there 
uh, social continuity and the wisdom of inherited customs over abstract principles or utopian ideals. He defines right-wing as favouring hierarchy, tradition, and often the protection of established institutions like family, religion, and nation. So you can see conservative is a sort of overarching philosophy and right-wing almost entirely overlaps with that. Conservative ideals are right-wing ideals, but there are extremes, which is why we talk about right-wing extremism or the far right, right? So calling something conservative and right-wing is perfectly cromulent. Uh, he also describes the right wing as uh, tending to favour individual responsibility, social order, respect for authority, you know, in, in, inherent respect for authority, uh, and with an emphasis on limiting state intervention in personal and economic matters. So you can start to see the crossover with sort of libertarian ideals uh, on the right hand side of the column there. Uh, Scruton defines left-wing politics as rooted in ideals of equality, social justice, and collective welfare, often seeking to reform or transform society to reduce inequality and expand opportunities. Uh, these are syncretic definitions that I've pulled from various sources of his. So, uh, The left-wing emphasizes systemic change to address perceived injustices and tends to advocate for policies that promote the redistribution of wealth, social welfare, and collective rights. Now, I'm aware that certain people are going to react in certain ways to some of those terms. So, traditionally, left-wing philosophy regards equality as equality before the law and equality of opportunity, not equality of outcome. Okay, so I know some people get triggered by the word equality, but that's what tends to be meant. Social justice... Similarly, it has become a tainted term, but if you look up the original definitions, I, I've had enough of definitions at this point, you'll see that that's not really what it means. And whenever you talk about collectivism or communitarianism, people also get triggered, but that just basically means economy of scale, everyone should have, in so much as is possible, the same sort of rights. Um, we should work together to better the lot of all of us. This is often more more economical, um, fairer. You know, that's that's what they're talking about there. All right. So definitions out of the way for the most part. Almanac of Sleep said, "I mean, even Tolkien, with his trad English conservatism, can appear socialist to the eyes of an American, even though Tolkien was a traditionalist and a Catholic." Uh, was a traditionalist and Catholic socialist can and do draw inspiration from his work. I think whether it's a storybook or RPG setting, the best work is open to interpretation from anyone. It's up to the people playing the game to make it right wing or left wing. And yeah, that was the conclusion of the video that I came to. Um, <clears throat> Tolkien, though slightly tongue in cheek, in cheek, uh, did describe himself as an anarchist uh, or even an anarcho monarchist, which shows the kind of dry. English humour uh, that often rears its head in his letters to various people, like the ones he sent to the naughty Germans. Um, and Christian socialism is is a thing. So, you know, you can interpret Jebus in, in a quite progressive, left-wing, socialistic way, um, should you desire to. And there is a whole wing of socialism called Christian socialism um, that you find throughout the world. So, yeah, I never think it's it's really quite fair to describe Tolkien as conservative in the same way that, that others do. He certainly has a fondness, aesthetically, if nothing else, for the sort of um, bucolic Middle England home counties sort of sort of, sort of thing that yeah that's where hobbiton and that comes from but his heroes break out of that mold um it, in various ways whether you're talking about uh legolas taking up you know adventuring and hunting goblins and, and all the rest of it which isn't necessarily in line uh with what's expected of an elven princeling um yeah, a dwarf venturing above ground to adventure, 
Bilbo and then Frodo having it away on their toes uh, from Hobbiton. Yeah, it, it, it certainly informs the background. And he was trying to make a a new mythology, a syncretic mythology for England, which he felt didn't have its own one, but was rather lent uh, a mix of various other mythologies. But, I, yeah, I, I always feel like it's a bit of a mistake to characterise Tolkien as conservative or to mention him in the same breath as C.S. Lewis, who, who very definitely was. Um, I think the, the dynamic of their friendship fools people a bit. I think Tolkien was a bit more fun than that. Uh, Lord St. John says... For a right-wing traditionalist like me, running a right-wing campaign indicates that themes such as tradition, ancestry, honouring the ancestors, adhering to ancestral codes, perhaps ancestor worship, hierarchical warrior culture, organised religious practice, and honouring God or the gods, nature, including animal husbandry, and the wise cultivation and management of the land, service to those above and below, and the social pyramid, community and cohesion, family, gender roles, and so forth, will all be prominent themes defined as good and or lawful. Chaos and evil will be those forces which seek to destroy, erode, or pervert those ancestral values. Games such as Mithras are great at encouraging players to roleplay effectively in such a milieu, where PCs are imbued with passions, mechanics which lean into societal traits. Wolves of God by Kevin Crawford, with its glory, shame, holiness, weird mechanics... Uh, in an Anglo-Saxon warrior culture also chimes well with a right-wing philosophy. In conventional D&D, the traditional lawful good paladin is a right-wing figure. Uh, mercantilism, the pursuit of cash wealth, and individualism over community, defined fundamentally by the family and then the nation, is not right-wing, it is liberal. In my campaigns, merchants rank low in the social order, particularly those traders who create nothing and profiteer as a middleman from the fruits of other people's efforts. Hence, they often come into contact with rootless, shiftless adventurers who drift among the flotsam and jetsam of society. Now, you describe that as right-wing and traditionalistic, but there are many elements in what you describe that are considered uh, left-wing. Um, the connection with the land, with nature, the veneration of agricultural workers... Uh, has been a common thread um, in in Marxism, certainly. Um, the idea of community and cohesion, I mean, the left wing views things on a communitarian basis, just not through the lens of nationalism or necessarily through the family. Um, what else did you say? Uh, the scepticism of uh, mercantilism or mercantilism, I suppose. Um, I mean, that's fundamentally left-wing. Uh, the criticism of capital and the accumulation of power in a parasitic uh, middleman class. You know, that's a very classic left-wing line of thought. Um, again, we run into issues with definitions because the definition here of, of liberal... Um, isn't one. I recognise the society you described was not very liberal at all because you're, it has this utterly stultifying hierarchy whereas liberalism tends to be uh, a, about freedom uh, over and above and then it's in, extre in its extremes into libertarianism. Um, so there's some crossover there but the, you know, the, the term liberal I probably should have defined as well because it's not very well defined there um, what you describe with merchants being very low on the social order that I mean it's in my, on my mind because of working on Ronin um, but yeah they're considered the bottom of the social hierarchy in uh, in feudal Japan uh, in, the, in the same way but then that's something you seem to have in common uh, with the left wing, but which the modern right wing venerates um, wealth creators and so on. So, and, and the thing is, lots of people making this same mistake, I think. You, you know, a world can be 
right wing that we create, but that doesn't necessarily mean the game is um, in the way that it is played or how it is interacted with by the players. Um, I mean, nine out of ten RPG groups coming upon this world that you describe would seek to overthrow it and change it um, and live outside of it. So, and and it could be presented as a critique of all those things. So it's it's not it's not as easy as that. Um, there's more to it than that. Uh, Jeremy Carnes says, yes, people can do things that you don't like. Um, I never said that I didn't like it. Um, my view has always been fairly laissez-faire. You can do what you like in your game. I don't have to like it, and I can criticise you for it. Um, a lot of people like Jeremy didn't actually watch the video, I think. And uh, there's the problem. Um Paul Cooper says, Cthulhu Invictus fits your profile, Pendragon 2. Does it, though? I'm not as familiar with Cthulhu Invictus, but Pendragon. Pendragon is the kind of Arthurian fictional chivalry and rulership thing. It, it sets an ideal that didn't really exist, the idea of a conscientious and good mo monarch. Um, so it is, through its fiction, it, it stands in sharp contrast to how things really were. Um, and, and again, the world might seem conservative because it's a monarchy and you, know, you have a peasant caste system and everything else. But that's not enough for a game to be considered political well, you know the the elements that are in it that's just the world that's presented and i think pendragon in presenting that um fictional arthurian ideal uh, isn't idealizing the past and tradition and everything else it's presenting a fictionalized alternative to it so i think you need I think both the philosophy behind the design and the execution of the design need to both be involved here as a bare minimum for you to say that a game is particularly political in whatever way. Um, and I don't think that's true of Pendragon. Can't speak to Cthulhu Invictus. Uh, Bernaf says, uh, the biggest barrier to a conservative renaissance in TTRPG spaces is the general psychological damage of most of the participants and their Zack Sabbath level for me in all things or utterly against me forever splitting behaviour, which they will then extend to somehow being about choices and how one runs games. Since the creators of the left-wing politicised titles act almost exactly the same way on Twitter, I'm inclined to think that it's actually Twitter-induced mental illness, but it could just be that trying to tie politics to games is only something that deeply unwell people are capable of in more than a hypothetical manner. Um, yeah, I think there's a lot to that in that both ends of the horseshoe are equally deranged in similar ways that are drawing even closer uh, through time. Um, and yeah, this all or nothing approach that I've been on the receiving end from both political polls uh, is definitely something that was present in a lot of the comments <laughs> here, for example. Um, yeah, it, I, I, this is part of what is hard. It's a lot easier to point at something and say that as a left-wing RPG, or ostensibly left-wing RPG semantics again. It's a lot harder to point at something and say that's a that's a right-wing RPG, um, because up until somewhat recently, most people have been quite cagey about whether their their game is meant to be an expression of their right-wing views or not. Whereas the the pseudo left has not been particularly shy about saying what their games are about or tying their personal identities and so on to it. I think that's that's shifting somewhat. But another common thread in the comments here was lots of right-wing or conservative people trying to lay claim to any and all games they could lay their hands on. 
I don't think that's accurate at all either, really. Um, it's just as silly as as the pseudo-progressive people pointing at all of those self-same games and saying they're fascist. Um, the, the, you know, there's, there's more things that need to be in play before you can say something is actually left-wing or right-wing. Uh, Julian the Apostate says, My take on a conservative right, uh, conservative slash right wing RPG would simply be one where the setting features rejection of the linear progressive theory of history and reinforcement of the cyclical tragic view, acceptance that different races and cultures are different and not equal, depending on what you measure, i.e., all cultures have some advantages and disadvantages, and it's possible to say that one is better than the other once you've defined better. Acceptance that the world is operated hierarchically and in and an organized minority always rules the disorganized majority. The canon for these beliefs can be found within Ivola, Mosca, Pareto, Burnham, Schmidt, Carlyle and others. For what is worth, Jim, you and I are in a similar place as I'm an old school traditional conservative who doesn't fit with neoliberal progressivism, the ruling ideology of NATO. Uh, this must be my psychology, but why on earth would you not be cautious with change? Entropy is a rule of our existence. When you change things, they often get worse. Okay, so... This idea of the linear progressive theory of history is primarily a Marxist one. Most other people say that there is, generally speaking, an advance, but that it is subject to setbacks, uh, even terrible setbacks. Uh, a cyclical view of history is also found in a lot of eastern philosophies which tend to be more left-wing in that they're more communitarian um, in a lot of ways and they place a lot of emphasis on consent to be ruled even when those societies are very authoritarian you know the, the concept of the mandate of heaven and and all the rest of it so i don't know that that's accurate um when we're talking about fantasy races uh, and cultures i can certainly agree with what you're suggesting and i would even dare to say that some cultures the more open uh less authoritarian ones are superior to cultures that are authoritarian uh regressive and dare i say it conservative the human race is not meaningfully different on any level, but when we're talking about fantasy races, we're really talking about different species. And you might as well be arguing that a mouse is as strong as an elephant in, in those instances. So that's a separation from real life, so I can't say that there's anything to support that. Um, the world doesn't need to be operated hierarchically, as I'm bound to say, as, as an anarchist. Um, people people get confused <laughs> about what a lot of these terms mean and I don't want to get sidelined into a lecture about anarchism and uh, emergent and temporary hierarchies or leadership so yeah um, why would you not be cautious with change because then you often don't change fast enough when you change things, they often get worse, but when you don't change things, they definitely get worse because they become less and less applicable over time. Uh, I mean, look at the climate change issue at the moment. Um, everyone is dragging their heels and being far too conservative about everything, which actually increases the necessity for rapid and revolutionary change at some point in the reasonably near future and will guarantee a, a, a large degree of cost upheaval, death, um, whereas if we'd acted more quickly sooner, there would be less of a problem. So, yeah, change is the only constant, and evolve or die, because the context is always changing. K Mike says, been thinking about this since Saturday, but despite the creators, I think dogs in the vineyard may apply here, because everything is played straight. Uh, yes, it's also historical, but it's a fictional history where Mormonism held more sway and sin was treated as objectively bad. And it was written by a progressive. And it's a what if. This is the other thing that I think we, we find. You know, a lot of people can play around with ideas without necessarily holding them 
themselves. I think that's certainly true of me. And you would think it was a skill that was more at hand <laughs> for a lot of role players because role playing games are uh, are empathy engines. You know, we spend time playing someone else, someone who isn't us. Um, and so clearly we can entertain ideas that are not our own uh, and that's a useful skill that you can apply outside of the games so I think yeah, that was written by a fairly progressive person it's, uh, it's this kind of archetypical indie game where it's very very focused on one particular experience it might describe a very conservative world and there is some implicit critique of that very conservative world, but it, does that make it a conservative RPG or just an experience engine? Um, and this goes for a lot of games. A lot of them are implicit or explicit critiques of conservatism that some conservatives, in a sort of inverse of Poe's law, I guess, um, don't seem to be able to recognise as being a critique or a parody or a satire of, of their beliefs, which is a weird position to be in. Um, uh, Alexi Schaefer says, you've described an interesting setting, however it is merely a caricature. You've missed your mark in describing the right. I mean, those are the definitions, and I set my definitions at the start. <laughs> so uh, that would seem to be a problem on your part. Uh, he goes on to say, um, because someone objected, shall I read off the definition followed by the script? Caricature. Exaggeration by means of often ludicrous distortion of parts or characteristics. By the statements given in this video, every TTRPG that isn't explicitly left-wing would therefore be right-wing, so not a useful definition. Here's your example. If a game where the game's master has greater authority than the other players is right-wing, then every TTRPG barring a handful from this decade alone would be conservative. An authoritative GM is how these games keep a pace without derailing. The GM's role as arbitrator is spelt out in every book's How to Play section. The only games I know of that buck this trend are the aforementioned explicitly left-wing games, but I'll concede that one may exist uh, that is not. This concession does not compromise the point. This is a ludicrous distortion of parts or characteristics, e.g. a caricature. I mean, again, I was using the definitions, and I think Alexei's comment is a great example of black and white, all or nothing thinking, which is often associated with the right wing. Um, I think in defining a right wing RPG or a, or a left wing one, it's not any single element. So you single out an authoritative GM. But that, in and of itself, in isolation, doesn't make any game that it's associated with right-wing. I mean, there's a there's a spectrum here, ironically. Uh, most games are a, are a they-them rather than a he-she, <laughs> to put it in modern terms. So, yeah, if we can say that a lot of these very pseudo-progressive, pseudo-left games promote a more horizontal authoritative structure um, with a lot more player buy and a lot of disempowerment of, of the games master then the opposite of that must be the other way so an even more authoritarian GM or authoritative GM with a lot more power would represent a more right wing point of view So and conventional Games mastering uh, is somewhere in the middle of that spectrum, but that is to the right of this disempowered GM. But that's just one element. We can also consider setting and what the creator intended and how the rules work and uh, what artwork was put into the book, the style of the writing, um, all of these kind of things. And then we can make a judgment as a whole. Uh, like Foucault's definition of fascism is a list of traits, but those traits can exist in groups that aren't fascist. It's only when you sort of reach a, a critical mass of those elements that you can genuinely call someone a, a fascist. Um, and so it is here. There's, there would need to be a sort of critical mass of elements. Um, and even then it might be a critique or a, or a satire so it's a very hard thing to define uh, 
Derek says the most trad conservative thing is the revolutionary fire inherent in humanity. I mean that that is literally the opposite of conservatism, my guy. <laughs> That's a, definitionally um, revolution is is the opposite. So you you literally couldn't be more wrong. <laughs> Uh, certified Funny Guy says, I feel like a lot of Vampire the Masquerade leans into this. Uh, you are part of the Brotherhood, and as such, you have duties and responsibilities to hold up the structure of your noble vampire family. There rarely, if ever, seems to be a reason to oppose your hierarchical system while you must uphold the status quo of secrecy and the structured existence of the vampire. Um, less so... But I think a very, very strong theme in the original Vampire was resistance to that gerontocracy of the Elders. Um, the Camarilla might pride themselves on their humanity, but they adhere to it for more pragmatic reasons than anything else, which does make them quite conservative. Uh, the Anarchs are probably the most human ones in that they want to change things, make things more, more equal, fairer, um, the Sabbat is almost the same as the Camarilla in a lot of ways, but it has a very religious fundamentalist structure. Um, it plays at being communitarian um, in the Valdery and everything else, but is actually very, very strictly hierarchical and has very set, strong codes of behavior and so on. Uh, to me, the Sabbat felt like a... A bit like Satanists in that they were caricaturing religion on purpose uh, to kind of make a point. <laughs> um, but also they felt like a critique of, um, well, not communism because they're not communist, but uh, the authoritarians who dress themselves up as, as communists um, or rebels of some kind. So they felt like a critique of Stalinism and things like that to me. But that's just my read. You don't have to agree. Uh, Altered Cabron says... Great name, by the way. Uh, Gaining wealth and building domains and kingdoms is inherently right-wing. Defeating a chaotic tyrant or hordes of barbarians to establish ordered social hierarchy is also inherently right-wing. Is it? I don't think you could have a chaotic tyrant, really, um, unless it's a Caligula who kind of inherits an empire. Uh, Celtic barbarians, sure. Uh, gaining wealth, building domains, mm, not if you consider the context of industrialization and democratized wealth, uh, as we tend to see in left-wing thought. You know, building up a domain is done in service to the common people, for the most part. Um, now, left-wing thought does tend to be more internationalist than nationalist, so in that aspect, you're probably right. But, yeah, it's also for the good of, of the commons to depose that tyrant or to see off those barbarians. So, again, you can put a left-wing spin on a lot of stuff that you consider to be inherently right-wing. Um, so I don't agree. Uh, Jeff from Denkar says, authoritarianism is not inherently right or left. Uh, again, I would I would have to disagree, and that's why I say Stalin and his ilk, or she, or whoever else, cannot meaningfully be said to be left-wing or communist, because the destruction, removal, the undermining of hierarchy and authority is one of the definitional characteristics of left-wing philosophy, uh, left-wing political thought, whereas the right-wing tends to embrace hierarchy and authoritarianism. I mean, that's where the terms left and right come from. You know, the left wanted to reform or do away with the monarchy and sat on the left. The right-wing wanted to support the status quo, the monarch and authority, and sat on the right. I mean, that's, that's literally where this split this fork in the political road comes from obeseness says the conclusion is what really makes this video the other segments are not without merit at all however from my perspective identifying what a right-wing ttrpg would look like it's simply all in the presentation you use the term safety tools this terminology is something that is very much leftist uh, 
only in flavour. In reality, all people have limits, but where the left will use terms like safety tools in their book, a right-wing TTRPG probably won't offer much advice warnings. However, that doesn't mean that if right-leaning people are playing a TTRPG that they don't ever discuss this in Session Zero. They may or may not, in the same way a group of left-leaning people who all know each other very well, may also skip this safety tools section before because they all know each other's limits. I actually play TTRPGs with a mostly exclusive moderate to right-wing group, and pretty much everyone at the table loves a game where they play as a criminal, pirates, bandits, etc. If anything, many right-wing people feel less driven to see a game with their own worldviews represented compared to left-wing people. Um, so, yeah, I don't agree that these people are left-wing, <laughs> and I feel the need to reassert that all the time as a leftist. Due to their authoritarianism um, and identitarianism, I mean, identity has always traditionally been linked uh, with the right wing, particularly the far right, you know, racial identity and all that. Um, there is a tendency on the left for regulation, um, and I guess you can view safety tools and their forcible incorporation into seemingly every RPG as a form of, uh, of regulation. Regulation isn't bad, necessarily, but they seem to feel it necessary to make explicit um, the implicit, right? You know, a sign saying "fire hot, do not touch" it doesn't seem necessary to most of us, but some people feel compelled to to point that out. Uh, Carl says, "You know, Dungeons and Dragons first edition—that's pretty right wing, comparatively speaking, to what is now considered left wing." Uh, but then you wouldn't touch it because you're on the bandwagon. As long as it's popular, that's where you want to be instead of having been one of the people who fought the war and suffered the whips. Hilarious. Clearly you don't know who I am <laughs> or what I've been through. And uh, let's leave it at that. Alex Drias says, I think it's possible, it's just less overt. Older games like D&D &D having strict rules on the races, racial classes different tiers of maximum strength based off sex and race. It's more of the background and rules than the more overt things like, say, thirsty sword lesbians. Um, Greyhawk, I feel, is a good conservative setting, at least before Wizards of the Coast does modern sensibilities to it in the new edition. So this presents an interesting uh, thing. Okay, so when we're talking about races in TTRPGs, we're actually talking about essentially different species with different very different physical, mental, psychological capabilities, uh, very different cultures, um, often somewhat monolithic cultures uh, based on their, their racial type. Um, but they are really different species. And if we look at reality, uh, we can see that there are big differences in things like physical strength uh, between the sexes. Um, that's not sexist you're not saying women have less worth or because they're not as physically strong or that men have less worth because they're physically strong and therefore only fit for work as laborers it's just acknowledging reality now the saying used to be reality as a left-wing bias right and that is certainly true when it comes to things like welfare social investment um economics generally speaking um and a, and a whole bunch of other things. But if we're talking about, you know, a, a three-foot goblin having a different strength stat than an eight-foot ogre, it, within the context of the fiction, that's just reality. And if we're talking about men tending to be physically stronger than women, on average, that's just acknowledging reality. Um, now, modelling reality is out of fashion in RPGs. We don't tend to see a lot of simulationism these days so but still that's just reality that I don't think reality is inherently left or right wing but I think acknowledging or ignoring reality can be depending on the political philosophy being employed but I don't think reality is inherently necessarily right wing or, or indeed left wing 
Dean Bloodworth says, In your final minute, you hit what I would consider the hallmark of a conservative game and or publisher creator. Playing a game for the sake of playing the game, and of course recognising it as a game. Troll Lord Games, with its Castles and Crusades RPG, takes a we-only-care-about-making-good-games stance. They actually tell their staff not to express political views, um, and not to attach Troll Lord Games to their posts, tweets, etc. Most GMs that I would consider conservative don't care what your identity is, only that you're at the table to play the game as it's presented. Gaming is meant to be for the purpose of imagination, escapism, and having fun. I mean, there are many different ways people can have fun. So uh, that's kind of like a, a, a meaningless noise, really, <laughs> in this context. But otherwise, I mean, these are what should be hallmarks of left-wing uh, games and creators um, making art for the sake of art not necessarily having it be politicized not having it be propaganda um, making something and then leaving people with the freedom to do what they want with it so I mean I, I would consider that to be in line with traditional left-wing thought um, but let's split the difference and say that's apolitical which is fine but there are activists who regard anything apolitical as being necessarily political because it's not addressing the political things that they really care about. And fuck those people. Uh, Crap Phone says, I would argue that the political definition of true conservatism is much simpler. It's just this. Maintain or conserve those political structures and processes that promote the common good. Standing against the argument of novelty and insisting that change be for the better and able to be reversed if it proves to be counterproductive to the good of the body politic. I would further argue that it does not inherently protect long-standing institutions and structures if they no longer serve the common good. Uh, I would also affirm what you said about the United States and political definitions. They're mangled constantly for a short-term goal to the point where they're almost meaningless unless you define your terms every time you use them with somebody. Uh, we're going to disagree on something fundamental here. Um, conservatism never seems to serve the common good um, nor does it accept positive change uh, and nor does it fail to protect long-standing institutions or structures that no longer serve the common good take for example first past the post uh, as a voting system both here in the UK and, and in the US that it does not serve the common good it's no longer fit for purpose. The historical reasons for it to exist no longer exist. Or why are conservatives so against public health care in the US? It's cheaper, more effective, serves the common good far better than private health care. Um, this isn't remotely controversial unless you live in the States. <laughs> Everywhere else in the world, everyone's like, duh, doy. Um... And, and so it goes for other institutions and other ways of doing things. It, so it might stand against the argument of novelty, which is a fallacy, but it does tend to stand on the argument from tradition, which is also a fallacy. Just because something is old or has been around for a long time doesn't necessarily mean that it's good or right or, or serves the common good. I mean, conservatives and the right don't tend to care about the common good at all and uh, tend to serve minorities, um, the ruling class, the rich, um, whatever excuses they come up for it. And that, that may be a telltale in that, in coming up for excuses for terrible things, as we see in Randy and objectivism, they claim it's for the common good, even though it very obviously isn't. Um, yeah, I mean, obviously that all that rant has my slant on it, but I I think the underlying principle holds. I don't think conservatism, I don't think right wing thought, really serves the common good, because um, it tends to preserve hierarchies and authoritarianism. Uh, Paul A O one says a game where non democratic systems are considered the norm, i.e., kings, queens, and noblemen. A game where history is not linear, progressive, but cyclical i.e. with lots of ruins of once great civilizations now gone. A game where races are not just identical palette swaps but have meaningful differences as recognised in character stats or abilities. A game where nature is not considered by default good but instead dangerous and the wilderness is a constant threat to be tamed. A game where equality is not a main theme and in fact people have wild inequalities in their ability 
such as powerful warriors, magicians, and a world of powerless peasants. A game where gods are real and obedience to them isn't just an aesthetic, but has real-world consequences, such as gaining or losing your magical abilities. A game where violence is considered an acceptable solution to conflict, not just a tragic solution of last resort. Do you need more examples of why Dungeons & Dragons is right-wing? But is it, though? Just because a setting, implicit or explicit, has these qualities to it doesn't mean that the game is left or right wing. Uh, this idea of cyclical history uh, versus linear history, I don't know why several people have associated the idea of linear progress as being necessarily left wing. Is it just because it's a, a Marxist thing? Um, I don't know, but it doesn't apply to everybody on the left. I wouldn't say it's a it's a key part of left wing philosophy as a whole. There's more to the left than Marx. Uh, we covered races versus species. Um, we talked about nature and development. I mean, unequal societies in a game can be seen as a call for heroes to do something about it. So again this this isn't enough um it certainly isn't enough to suggest that a game invented by a bunch of hippies in middle america is inherently right wing uh Kronkers says i honestly think in order to make a right wing ttrpg you should just jam as many offensive stereotypes in it and pandering to right wing beliefs very explicitly because that seems to be the only right wing content being produced by right wingers not really ideologically right-wing in any real way, just full of as many hollow pandering culture war issues as possible because that's what right-wingers think they want, even though they really don't. It would basically be the same thing as the fake progressive rainbow capitalism that we see but for the right-wing. Of course, though, nobody would ever play it, including far-right people. Okay, I get accused of being uncharitable <laughs> and so on here, but I think that is uncharitable. Um, I do think you're right in that in order to qualify uh, a right-wing TTRPG would have to be as explicitly shitty. It would have to wear its politics on its sleeve the same way that things like Horse Girl and so on do. Um, and there just there aren't that many examples of that in role-playing. The, the closest things we have are Rohoa, which isn't playable in any way, shape or form. And my Farog, where you can't, it, it's not really explicit enough to meet the definition, but we know Varg's politics, he's not exactly shy of them, and they do come through in the game. But if you choose to ignore them, it's a slightly historical semi clone of DD. So, yeah, I think you're being a bit uncharitable, but I do agree that. It would have to be the equivalent of the most egregious pseudo-progressive, pseudo-left-wing games. Uh, Midnight Green says, Grim, shitting on everything right of centre again. Uh, by your standards, every old-school game is right-wing. AD&D, Beck Me, Old Call of Cthulhu, Warhammer and 40k. Uh, I wasn't shitting on everything right of centre. You didn't listen to my standards, as you admit in the next comment. Uh, and no, they wouldn't, particularly not 40k, Warhammer. Uh, Midnight Green then went on to say, after I said you didn't watch the video, You're correct, I completely ceased to give a solitary fuck about anything you say about politics after the assassination attempt video you made. TPS uh, was absolutely correct, you're grim Jim the unwise. I forget who TPS was. Um, but, you know, if you'd watched the video, you'd know otherwise. And I'm glad I was wrong about the Trump assassination and it attempt and it didn't make him a shoe in of the two assassination attempts but he is still a horror show and if he does get back in it's going to be a hard few years for everybody in the world let alone America uh, Red Panda God says I'm surprised that a self-described leftist would say politics and entertainment is bad so used to the modern or woke left's BS I completely agree that politics and propaganda should be left out of entertainment. That said, I don't consider myself as right-wing, but would probably be considered as such by the modern left for sticking to my position that was once left-leaning from centre, as the political centre sprinted far to the left due to normalisation of left-wing extremism. The far extreme left is now just called the left. 
uh, well, even much of the old centre-left is seen as right-wing now for not agreeing or opposing elements of radical leftism. Uh, I'm guessing you're American, but America doesn't really have a left at all, let alone a far left outside of some radical student groups and so on. Um, this obnoxious progressivism, pseudo-progressivism, isn't really left-wing, and when it comes to mainstream politics... The furthest left you have is Bernie Sanders, who would be considered a fairly conventional centre-leftist outside of America. Um, your centre is our hardline right, um, and your right-wing is considered our dangerous right-wing extremist. So, <laughs> again, we run into the problem of definitions. Uh, sheep beeps cool name says uh, problem is the modern right wing in general uh, has their politics come first before making an interesting game that and the entire media sphere they operate in is just grifters from top to bottom a number of attempts have been tried on kickstarter and other outlets and uh, we're going to make a game with traditional values people just run off with the money every time yeah but that's also the problem <laughs> on the on the pseudo left pseudo progressive uh, identitarian left um, you may well end up with a game at the end of it though which I guess is slightly better but yeah it's the Christian rock problem and um, if you put your message over making good art you make bad art um, yeah uh, Wesley you're a rabbit says what do conservative games include choice and I may die of irony, uh, <laughs> given how much of an issue abortion is uh, in the US this election cycle. Uh, Josh Peters says, I think the question is fundamentally flawed, as you point out towards the end of the video. However, your discussion of themes and settings uh, in possibly right-wing games is also off the mark. I think the only way a game could be considered right-wing would be through its mechanics and gameplay. You hit on this briefly with respect to the mechanics of advancement. But what about a gameplay cycle? D&D used to have gold for XP as a mechanic. This is inherently a conservative gameplay mechanic. The characters get exactly their rewards from their labours and advance accordingly. Progressive games have downtime cycles, uh, where characters venture off into debauchery and vice to blow off stress as a form of healing, for lack of a better term. A conservative game could do something similar, but characters would pray or participate in church bake sales or the like. Still, in the end, writing an ideological screed and trying to pass it off as a game seems like a losing proposition, regardless of the politics involved. I mostly agree uh, with what you're saying there. However, those same games that include vice and debauchery as a way to psychologically or physically heal your character often do also include things like going to the temple and praying or... Uh, donating things as well. I, I may be remembering wrong, but wasn't the old D&D mechanic not only gold for XP, but you have to spend the gold uh, for it to count as XP? Or was that a later OSR edition or one particular one? But I don't think that's necessarily um, right-wing either. It's an abstraction in the same way that hit points are. It's a way of both measuring your success and limiting the amount of experience points you can uh, you can drag up out of the dungeon um, and thereby acting as a sort of break on advancement, I think. Uh, omnibus. Sorry, maybe I didn't say that clear enough while I think of it. Um, yeah, the dragging the gold out was a proxy. So I don't think it was a conservative mechanic. It was just a way of determining success uh, abstractly. Sorry. Anyway, Omnibus4445 says, As a conservative, I'm always interested in what the definitions of things are nowadays. I feel that when you say the, the phrase conservative or right-wing, you're making an incorrect statement because you then go on to describe what I would call far-right. Conservatism and far-right are not the same. Also, conservatives in general really only ascribe to tradition as it concerns their own households. Conservatives wouldn't blink to overthrow a monarchy or religious institution that threatened their family, take into consideration the Revolutionary War. Conservatives got together to declare their independence and take up arms against an authoritarian regime slash monarchy. Following that was the constitution and the founding of a country at the end of the day is fairly new in view of other countries. Your point about laws and such seems spot on. 
a new system was created to try and actually prevent authoritarianism so that men could protect their own households, second amendments and such to provide for the ability to take up arms against those kind of regimes. But then the waters get murky again when you talk about hierarchies and castes. Far left countries that go too far end up like Russia and China where you still have hierarchies and castes but it's forced. Ultimately far right and far left circle back around and touch each other. Are Nazism, fascism, communism really all that different? You have the same result, but it's just those who decide that it's different. Um, well, you can't have a communist state. Definitionally, you can't have a communist state, and therefore you can't have Stalinism and still call it communism in any meaningful sense. Uh, separating Nazism, fascism was a bit odd there. Um, so yeah, those things definitionally are different because fascism directly calls for that end result and regards it as a good thing, whereas communism as a philosophy is explicitly against that kind of thing and wants to work against it, but seems to have this vulnerability for being usurped by that very same kind of philosophy. Uh, saying that conservatives wouldn't blink to overthrow a monarchy or religious institution that threatened their family is... I mean, to me, it's obviously untrue on its face. So, and the Revolutionary War, um, the Founding Fathers and so on were not conservatives by the definitions of the, of the period, or even really today, if you spend the time to look into them very much. Um, they were extremely liberal for their period. I mean, look at their religious beliefs, for example. Um, what they wrought was revolutionary for the time, but it has been calcified and codified into a conservatism that they never wanted uh, by successive generations afterwards who have come to regard their constitution and their ideas in the same way that religious fundamentalists view Bibles and things. And um, I'm sure that's not what they would have wanted at all. But in no way were they conservatives, certainly not in the period. Uh, Foxtrot Elements says, Please stop using the terms right-wing and conservative as the same meaning. That would be like saying all liberals are woke liberals. We both know that's unfair and it's biased language that is not used in respectful ways. If these terms like conservative and liberal have regional meanings instead of one global term, as you state, don't you think we should stop using those terms in a global fashion? How we can't figure out our own politics in real meat space, why bring our imaginary games into it? It's all just divisive, when we as a people should not be separated by these games of the wealthy and powerful, which is a left-wing position <laughs> to, <laughs> to express. Right-wing and conservative do have overlapping meaning. Um, when you say right-wing, it doesn't have to mean extremes. It doesn't have to mean fascists. Um, conservatives are on the right. Um socialists are on the left uh, democratic socialists or social democrats are, are both on the left just to varying degrees so sorry if you hear if you hear hitler when someone says right wing that's on you um, but it is on that side of the political line uh, spacer x says I'm not any kind of right-wing person at all, but I'm going to define the right-wing and what a right-wing game looks like. Sure. Uh, Scruton? <laughs> definitions? I might be on the left, but I can apply definitions. I can read them, and I can apply them, and they're definitions that came from a conservative. Enwood Snowman says, I'm detecting lots of left equals good versus right equals bad where definitions are just a grab bag of positively or negatively associated traits. Maybe a video about true Scotsman next? I mean, th there's an irony there because a lot of the comments are basically trying to claim things that they consider good as being right-wing, even when they're explicitly left-wing. I get accused of this a lot, but, you know, I'm left-wing because the left-wing, for the most part, expresses the values that I consider good. So... I'm putting the horse before the cart rather than the cart before the horse. Um, but I see a lot of people doing what I'm often accused of. Uh, I'm not going to necessarily speak for them doing the same thing, but when someone talks about community as being a value of the right, uh, I can't help but scoff. 
Sebastian the Cookie Fan says, In the 1980s, everyone involved in RPGs was essentially hard right, from kids to adults. As a moderate centrist, I felt like an absolute leftist in that crowd of pagan, Nazi, death metal heads and Tolkien enthusiasts. I doubt it really changed. It's likely the same today. Uh, nah, mate. <laughs> that is not my experience at all, and I very much doubt it was, it was the experience of many people. Certainly in the UK, I would say well over 90% of people that I interacted with, uh, including conventions and things in the pre-internet days, was left-wing, even once we had the internet. Most of the RPG communities that I've been involved in, uh, in any way, shape or form, have been overwhelmingly left-wing. I don't think I even met any explicitly right-wing role players um, until I got the internet. Um, there was certainly a minority in the Camera Little LARP society. Uh, same with the metal scene. Um, I don't know that I ever met <laughs> any uh, far-right metalheads. Sure, some of them had Nazi paraphernalia and so on that they were collecting or the iconography of the bands and so on. I think someone mentioned Motorhead. Yeah, Lemmy collected war memorabilia, but he was not right-wing in any way, shape or form. Um, and, and so it goes with Tolkien. I think this says more about your perception and prejudice than it does anything else. Uh, Mozpaints 40k says, Oh dear, pretentious whinging. Ah, pretentious, I'll grant you. Whinging, absolutely not. Zang. On a crazy whim, I recorded the almost entire 5th edition D&D SRD as an audiobook. And you can pick that up, pay what you want on Drive-Thru RPG, or you can listen to it on a playlist on my YouTube channel, Postmortem Video. The gallows is cold and the gibbet is lonely. We'll make things hard for you here. The gallows is cold and the gibbet is lonely. We'll make things hard.